Hey guys, welcome no, to our no, first no. official video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with um, a very special guest, <laughs> Ellie Obo. She's my roommate, and a lot of people I feel like don't know that we're roommates. And then it's funny because we're both like really big, like we, have, we like, do a lot Instagram, of social media yeah. stuff. And so it's funny that we like we're randomly I know, chosen we were randomly to be roommates. Assigned to be roommates. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about some topics regarding classical music and conservatory life. So let's just dive right in. We I think we have a lot of conversations like these, like right before we go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> and so we thought it'd be interesting to have one of these conversations on the camera. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Like sometimes deep stuff happens at like, I don't know, 12. 12. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're like For about real. to turn off the lights and we're like... What do you think of this? Yeah. <laughs> but, but they're always really good conversations. Yeah, they're, like, though. very insightful. Mm -hmm. But also, before we get started, um, why don't you, like, give, like, a little introduction for, like, who you are, what's your <laughs> instrument, like, background, I guess? Sure. So, I'm Ellie. I play the oboe, of course. Ellie Oboe. Um, I actually started music on piano when I was maybe three or four and then I ended up like not being able to f afford lessons um due to some family stuff and so I switched to the violin because there was a non-profit organization Miami Music Project which I was a part of for about like eight years um but I ended up not really liking violin sorry Sophie <laughs> okay, no offense taken <laughs> Um, and I ended up switching to oboe because my best friend in high school, well, in middle school, played oboe, and she wanted to learn how to play piano. So she was like, if you teach me oboe, I'll, well, wait, if I teach you oboe, you teach me piano. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mmm. So that's what we ended up doing. We ended up switching. And I think she still plays piano, and here I am at a conservatory <laughs> playing oboe. So, Aww. yeah, I Cute. did Miami Music Project, stayed in Miami, then I went to New World School of the Arts, then I went to Interlochen, and then now I'm at Peabody. So, yeah. Yeah. You want to tell your story? Oh, sure. <laughs> I, um, so I play the violin currently. We're both freshmen in college, mm. um, and I started off on piano. I did not like it. I, <laughs> my hands are too small. I can barely reach an octave on piano. So my parents switched me over to violin, and at first I really didn't like violin. Um, I just hated it. <laughs> uh, practicing was torture, but uh, it eventually grew on me, and so now I'm here. Plot twist, biggest plot twist of my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but now we're both here doing music despite, I don't know, I guess the things that, like, we never thought we would end up doing. I mean, I guess you, like, always kind of, like, liked music a lot mm -hmm. and stuff, so, but... Yeah, so that's our kind of introductions, but I guess we would just kind of go into, like, some topics we'll talk about. Yeah, we had a couple of questions that people asked on our Instagram stories, yeah. so, and some of them were kind of, like, not questions <laughs> that we could ask on something like this, but. <laughs> okay, so the first question is, what is your best or favorite memory from your musical career so far? Hmm. Honestly, it used to be, like, it, cha it obviously, like, changes, yeah. Um, I think it used to be when um, my school went to Miami and, like, mm -hmm. my old program from back home and Interlochen kind of did, like, a concert together, mm -hmm. which was ridiculous because I got to see my friends from back home. Mm -hmm. uh, like, a lot of my friends from back home got to come see the concert. And I also got to play first oboe for the first time, like, Queen. in a major symphony, which was so cool. Wait, which symphony so, was it? It was Shasti Five. Wait, I think I saw that on YouTube. I'm yeah, not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shasti Five is such a good symphony too, um, but honestly, like, I think my best, my best memory, like, music-wise, what actually changed, like, this summer, I went to uh, a camp at uh, Walnut Hill, it was, like, mm. NEC's camp, and there was something about, like, just one the people like who came with me like I had known them for a few years mm -hmm. and so they were all kind of like family and it wasn't even like something it like it was just the whole like experience of being there mm -hmm. like I played chamber friends with people like I wanted to play chamber with like mm -hmm. I got to choose the piece like my friends were excited about mm -hmm. it too and like 
at the end of the camp, my friends, like, made a salsa band, <laughs> and we, so we, like, just literally danced to oh it for, like, an hour, Amazing. and it was, like, so much fun to just see, like, everybody so passionate and, like, having so much fun with, like, what we love doing. Yeah. It was just, it was just really cool, and it's, like, funny, because it's not really the classical music that made it that memorable like it was definitely part of it but Mm -hmm. like my fondest memory of that time was that we played in a salsa band so (laughs) actually yeah yeah. um for me like I would say my favorite memory with music like when I think about all my most rewarding music experiences they're actually not like oh me playing in orchestra and giving this performance like I mean, of course, those are very rewarding, but I just love, like, the ones that are, like, interactive, like, with Mm -hmm. other people, with, like, the audience, whatever it is, whether that is classical music or it's not, like, I just really love that. That's what makes, like, live music so different, I feel like, versus, like, listening to a recording. Um, Yeah, I just love, like, playing at nursing homes, playing with little children that, like, haven't seen instruments or, like, um, they're just very curious. Um... Yeah, I would say those performances are, like, some of my best memories. And, like, that's when I really feel like music is, like, a gift, you know? Like, that yeah, you're able to yeah. share with other people. Mm-hmm. So, this is a great segue into our next question, which is yeah. regarding, like, classical versus jazz. Because, I mean, for me personally, I didn't really have m- much, if any, knowledge of jazz before I came in here. And even after I'm here, I there's still a lot I have to learn. But what about you, like, with your... Yeah, I am... Um... Well, so I've, since high school, I've kind of been, like, really exposed to jazz because um, New World had a really good jazz program, so did Interlock In. But then Peabody has a really good jazz program, too. So um, I just think, like, it's definitely partially the people that, mm. like, in both classical and jazz, like, I think that's what forms them. Like, I think my, like, vision of jazz when I was in early... Um, early high school was kind of like it was kind of like toxic Mm. because um around me like all of the classical musicians who were my friends were kind of like oh jazz like that's not really something like we do yeah jazz is is kind of like I don't know like sacrilegious yeah almost like looked down upon yeah yeah like like we were talking about this with like it I always thought of it as, like, less technical than classical. Like, I think of almost every genre as less technical than classical, and that's probably true in terms of, like, technique, because, like, I feel like classical is all about, like, scales and, like, like, all these, like, techniques, like, scales and double stops and, like, all these things that you just practice. Mm -hmm. But, like, especially with jazz, I mean, jazz is, like, a whole other side of technique where it's, like, transposing and all those things. Yeah. But, like, I feel like there's just so much of an emphasis on technique in classical music yeah that almost takes away a lot of that interactive and the joy that comes with music that's supposed to come with music yeah yeah that's so true and I think like um with like everybody everybody just like I think it's like a social thing where even even though all of these people were like oh my god jazz like don't jazz isn't like classical musicians shouldn't play jazz that type of energy like none of those musicians had ever really listened to jazz Mm -hmm. like ever tried playing jazz and so it was kind of just like the whole state I think there's like a stigma in the classical music like community where like playing anything other than classical music is frowned upon and it's like it's weird or it's cringe or it's it's like easy yeah like it's like not as I don't know I don't know well it's also like I think it's a little made fun of too like I, I remember being, like, maybe not too young, maybe just, like, a few years ago, if you were to play, like, anything, like, any pop song that you liked, like, people would make fun <laughs> of you. Like, it was a thing, like... I'm sorry, but, like, literally all the people walking by hearing me play, like, Harry Potter in the practice room, <laughs> probably, like, what? Yeah, but it's, like, and now that I, I teach, it's, like, I I see so much, like, joy in, in the kids that I teach, be, like... Because they're playing stuff that they want to play. Exactly. And if they want to play, like, a Taylor Swift song, then, like, let them. You know what I mean? Because at a younger age, 
you I think you the love has to come first mm, the yeah. love for music has to come first before like because they're gonna need to want to practice exactly they need to want to like play music right. and if you don't give them that like initial love they're not going to want to right you know? exactly that's so, so true it's so complicated I think. it is so complicated because like when like the more i talk about it it's not like it's not like we're bashing classical music or anything like we're literally classical musicians yeah, we're, <laughs> we're not trying to say like anything but it's like even in my like classical like teaching side like my teacher a lot of the time he like always stops me when i'm playing and he's like stop like you're sounding like a student not a musician you know mm-hmm. what i mean like it's so hard because i feel like classical music focuses on technique but then during lessons and during performances you kind of do have to throw all of that out the window yeah. to give your best performance That's which true. is like it's like such a paradox it's confusing like, i think it was hard like it still is really hard to like explain that to especially like younger students where like they don't have the necessary technique like yet to be able to understand what it is to be like musical you know because like I think there's there's this like paradox that we talked about too that was like the division between like musicality and technique oh yeah but then those like really play hand in hand too I know where it's like um you have um For example, like, you can't have musicality without having technique. And I think a good example was I had a lesson with um, uh, an oboist from San Francisco, and he had said that um, he was asking me, like, okay, you want this part to be, like, more, like, heartfelt or something Mm -hmm. like that. Like, how can you portray that? And I was, like, uh, I was, like, giving him, like, adjectives, like, the characteristic like traits like right. words right and he was like okay like good i like that you have a picture in your head but like what are the techniques that you can use to portray these things and i like had never really thought of it like that i think i had always been like oh yeah i want this to be sweet like i want this to be whatever but i never really thought about like thinking like actually actively thinking about what i need to do to make it sound sweet like yeah do I need to cover more? Do I need to, like, add vibrato? Do I need to do, like, this type of thing? And and so it's, like, I think that's not explained until way later because Mm -hmm. there is a technique to musicality. Right. And I I do think that, like, there has to be, like, obviously when you are learning an instrument, you, you kind of, like, you can't really add in, like, the music. The music does come later. Like, Mm -hmm. it's just how it is. Like, I can't really teach a kid to, like, be expressive right off the bat like what are they going to be expressive with yeah how do they know how to be expressive like I think it's easy for voice because it's like attached to you to Mm -hmm. be expressive because I think it's kind of a natural thing to kind of know how to sing maybe not sing well but like you know how to sing and and you know what I think listening to to people sing too like we listen to a lot of music you kind of understand like what a sweet sound Mm -hmm. sounds like and like maybe trying to replicate it you know what I mean like I think it just comes way more naturally than on instruments you like you're trying to be like you're trying to replicate what a vocalist would do that's true like that's a kind of like your instrument is your voice exactly and you have to like learn how to use that new voice Mm -hmm. it's like an extension but it's like different yeah and so you need to learn how different it is and what you need to do to like do certain things Mm -hmm. And it's, like, I don't know. It's, like, the more, like, like I think when we were talking the first time about this, it's, like, there really is no, like, set conclusion to this. It's just, like, an ongoing thing. And, like, we just, especially now that we both, like, have a couple of students and things like that, like, when you become a teacher, you have to start thinking about, like, what is it that I want to carry on? Like, how can I make a difference in this, like, so, like in this community, like, this classical music community or just music community in general? Mm-hmm. Like, how are we going to not necessarily change but like how do we bring back those aspects that have been like kind of lost like classical music didn't used to be so like but yeah just going back to what we were saying (laughs) like like classical music it didn't it it wasn't always like like I feel like now it feels like it's reserved for only people who can understand it and like Mm. only people who like Mostly just understand it because yeah. it's it's hard to understand. But but back then it was for everybody. Like no matter what social class you were, like that was popular music. 
Yeah, like, like when it first, 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 because then like Mozart's time, it was also elitist. Like already like 16th century, 17th century, it was already starting to become like the white wig people could right. play, right? Like mm-hmm. Oh, back to like, like even back then, they would still like improv cadenzas. Like it would be more about like the experience of music yeah. and like bringing that to anybody and like everybody can enjoy it. Whereas now... I've never personally improvised a cadenza, because why? I'm, like, too scared I'm going to mess up on stage. Yeah. Like, I don't even think about improv I'm like, oh my gosh, i got to get all the notes in. And it's like, and here you come to school and they try to, like, help you unlearn that. Like, mm-hmm. try to, like, not think about all those things when you're performing, but it's so hard because yeah. that's what the judges look at. It's ingrained in you, like, every competition. And, and it's so, I feel like it's really hard for me to, like, enter competitions because I like can see other musicians have like stuff down to like every single note like they don't miss a single note a single rhythm like anything they don't even get tired like it's actually ridiculous but they're robots and the thing is like even though they're robots they will win the competition because they hit all the notes and like that's literally what you see happen and they're like your teachers are like, oh, just, like, enjoy it, like, have fun, like, don't think about the notes, but it's, like, how can I not think about the notes when literally that's all anyone, like, who's listening to it is, yeah, yeah, is thinking about, yeah, and so it's, like, it's definitely rough. Mm -hmm. I feel like everyone knows this is, like, a problem, but, like, no one really knows what there is to be done about it, like, it's hard, because obviously, again, like we said, like, technique matters, like, we obviously don't want to go on stage and, like, have all this musicality, but, like, sound so out of tune that you can't even enjoy it. Like, that's not, yeah. that's not plausible either. But it's just, like, how do we just bring back, like, that experience? Like, more focusing on, like, interacting the experience of performing as opposed to playing, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I think the whole, like, competition aspect of classical music also is part of why, like the energy is like the, just That's the energy true. of classical music is so like toxic because the whole purpose of those classical music competitions is like who can get it the most perfect yeah, you know what I actually, mean actually like, that's true like it's not like we have like pop music competitions like nobody yeah. puts like Charlie Puth versus Selena Gomez or something yeah. like it's more like they collaborate or they have their own thing yeah and like Again, our teachers are also telling us, like, you got to bring your own artistic interpretation. Like, it's your, like, you're special. Like, but it's so hard to think that way when, mm-hmm. like, it doesn't feel that way. Yeah, I do think that, like, for example, um, in in some, like, professional cases where, like, you already have the experience and, like, you've played these pieces for, like, forever, um, there's, there's times where, like, everybody else who's applying or everyone else who is auditioning has it all down perfectly Mm -hmm. and like and then all you have left is to be musical but i feel like there is so much like how can you just like not think about the technique Mm -hmm. you know what i mean because it's just like you know that like if you mess up and everyone else has been playing this as long as you have and they have all the notes down perfect because you missed that one note you can be as musical as you want like you'll still lose it's so (laughs) hard it's it's hard like this is just stuff that like also i didn't really think about all of this before i came to conservatory i'm not gonna lie like like you had gone to like music school before what is it yeah i went to music school all of high school yeah but uh, like for me i'm like literally learning what it means to be an artist like right here like they're telling us like it's about your own stuff and like it's stuff i've never heard before because before coming here all i ever thought about was if i can get the notes right if i can play in tune get the rhythm whatever whatever like that's all i thought about and that's all i thought went into music but that's actually like so far from the truth yeah i mean i think it definitely is a healthier way of thinking like i'm glad that my teachers do tell me to Mm -hmm. like enjoy and i think like some certain aspects of like those technique things just come from experience. Yeah. Like, it's, true. it's like, the more you practice, the more you play in ensembles, the more you just, like, experience playing, like, it'll just get better over time because you are working on it. You know what I yeah. mean? But I do certainly think that, like, competitions don't... Like, a lot of classical music 
doesn't agree with that Mm, yeah like the message of the rest of classical music doesn't agree with that that's true you know getting into college is the same way yeah like auditioning to a conservatory like i remember my teachers telling me like have fun like show the teachers that you love music like blah 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 blah. but like that's not true and like this is also a touchy subject because it's not only like the whole like competitive aspect of it of like everybody has to have perfect technique like it is partially it but also people definitely get into conservatories because of the connections that they made mm, like that's true the money too. that they have so like yeah just Very, yeah yeah that's there's like a lot a lot and the same with college like not even music school like this yeah is the same with like i think any part of the world now like i feel like connections are like a huge part of mm-hmm. life in general and but. some of those connections you can only make from like money really and so it's like tough yeah but anyways that's our thoughts on that topic moving on towards our last question um we got a question about like how do we maintain mental health like while being at conservatory or like being in this classical music world (laughs) both of us are like (laughs) we struggle yeah i think like every classical music musician in general kind of Probably every musician. I mean, I know every person, everybody struggles with mental health, but mental health, but I feel like here, especially, like, how do you not have, like, what is it, imposter syndrome, like, burnout, burnout, like, it's just, it's, it's part of it. Like, it's like, there's, it's not if you're gonna get mental health problems, it's like when you do. And so it's like, how do you cope with that? Like, how do you remind yourself, like, why you do music and just how do you deal with that i think it's hard for me sometimes to realize that like progress isn't a straight line mm. and then it's like kind of just like steps you yeah know, like, like the you plateau you like it yeah. better you like yeah and sometimes like those plateaus just feel really long yeah and sometimes they're not even plateaus and you can't really just you just can't feel your progression because like um you have to sit with yourself in that practice room every day and like for example um i was i went to um like another part in maryland yesterday with a good friend of mine and she was telling me she was like like you've gotten so much better in the last like few months and i was like and recently i've been really burnt out and so i was like i feel like that's not true and she was like, no, like, every time I hear you play, like, your reads are better, like, your sound is better, like, your, like, technique is better. Mm-hmm. And, like, that was my whole, like, I literally went into a lesson last week and was like, I feel like I'm not getting better, mm-hmm. like, blah, 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 blah. And she was like, it's probably because you have to sit in a practice room with yourself yeah. every day. And, like, you don't see the progress. Like, even when you record yourself, like, you're you're kind of taught to take those recordings not as, like, oh look how much better i did last time it's like what i, I need to i need to fix yeah, yeah this everything is what i need, I need to, to fix. improve on yeah yeah that's true that's a really good point though like i feel like just remembering like progress isn't like an uphill trend like it's like lots of ups and downs plateaus like lots of stuff and same with life but mm-hmm. yeah um i think i mean something that might help me is just like being able to remember why on earth I do music like like those little performances that I told like that we just talked about like giving them to non-musicians or like maybe like a concert for a nursing home or something like that like those like more casual settings I feel like those like bring me right back to like why I do music like yeah it's more like it reminds you like it's not just about, like, you and your skill. It's, like, also about, like, what can you bring to other people? Mm-hmm. And they are not looking at your, like, intonation. Like, they don't care. Yeah, that's they, true. They mm-hmm. don't. And so, like, those moments like that, it, it helps you, like, refocus and, like, just remember, like, I guess the bigger picture of, like, why you're doing it overall. Yeah. I also like the the distinction that I heard someone make about, like, doing something because you like have fun doing it versus doing something because you like the attention of doing Mm. it and like i think sometimes like it's easy to confuse the two oh yeah you know like 
it's easy to get caught up in the fact that like people are like wow like yes you can play like (laughs) you can play harry potter on violin like oh my god play it again (laughs) like you know what i mean but then there's like it's whether you enjoy that these people are giving you the attention or whether you actually like while you were practicing it you were like oh my god yes i'm playing harry potter Mm -hmm. on violin like you know what i mean that's so true um and i feel like sometimes it's hard for me to realize that too like um and that's kind of why i've like been off instagram for a while is like i think i was just constantly seeking like validation Mm. on the internet instead of kind of like enjoying what i was doing and then that's what like the whole purpose of like doing the like once a week playing with someone because i feel like my whole like purpose of doing music like the reason i enjoy it so much is because i love sharing it with Mm -hmm. other people like i love specifically like playing with other people like because I, I like get so much yeah. from them and just the energy of playing with someone else is like so much better than playing alone obviously yeah, true um but then like it became uh even with another person it'd be like oh did this one get in as many views as the last yeah. one like why didn't it or like mm-hmm. why did it or like what do I need to change and it became such a statistical thing yeah. and like also just like an attention seeking thing that I was like okay I need to take a break from this like actually enjoy like practicing actually find things that I like enjoy practicing so that like I can start posting that again right instead of just like the things that I'm working on that I know sound good so that I can post them on the internet and people can tell me that I sound good like yeah and it's like it's so hard not to get carried away with that stuff like it's not like we always post with the intention of getting things back Mm. but it's like when you do sometimes, it's sometimes it just gets to your head. Yeah. And then you look for that more. So, like, that's why it's I think drag. breaks. <laughs> yeah. Like, the breaks are super helpful because they help mm. you step back and remember, like, oh, wait a minute. Like, that's not actually what's important to me. Like, that's not what I'm doing this for. It, it really helps you, like, reset and refocus. So, yeah. I think those are, like, several ways. And, like, we're still learning, too. Like, yeah. we're just freshmen. Like, we don't... Yeah. <laughs> we, we're not 100% there. Well, yeah. we're never going to get 100% there, but... Mm. And I think yeah. even professionals feel burned out. Like, oh, no, yeah. For sure. Like, um, I remember last week I talked to my teacher about how I was feeling burnt out, and he was like, yeah, I totally get it. Like, yeah. I feel burnt out all the time. And I was like... Cool. <laughs> I was like, good to know. Good to know. <laughs> well, like, I mean, good to know that I'm still going to be feeling it in the future. No. <laughs> but no, no. But also, like, the fact that he, like, he feels it and that, like, he's amazing. Like, yeah. I, my teacher's, like, I mean, he has a job and he's, know, like, amazing. They are, like, the teachers honestly make such a big difference, too. Like, they they're do. They're people that I look up to so much. Like, I look up to my teacher so much. Like, man. Yeah. It's, and, uh, you know, like, I think when when looking into schools, I was so heavily focused on, like, the name and stuff. And, like, I'm actually so glad, like, I ended up coming to Peabody, like, instead of some... Because I was really focused on, like, I was like, I want to go to Julia. Like, mm-hmm. I want to go to CIM or, like, those big name schools. But, like, honestly, I don't think any other school would have given me what Peabody has given me. Aww. And, like... I've made so many, like, valuable friendships, like, experiences, just, like, I even, like, I don't even think I would have, I just had my first gig on Thursday, you had your first gig this yeah, weekend, too, let's go. and, like, um, those are, like, experiences that I got because I, like, my friends, mm. like, through a friend, or, like, connections, like we were talking yeah, about, conne- exactly, connections, connections. But Connections also, are always bad, just saying. Like, no, they're good. I feel like they're good. They're well, always yeah. good, I think. No, like, yeah, it's just not like like when we were talking about, like, the money aspect. Like, exactly. It's not about like, that. We're talking about, like, exactly. genuine friendships and connections. Mm-hmm. There we go. So, like, and actually, this gig that I had gotten was from, like, a jazz kid. Like, and I only recently started hanging out with, like, a lot of the jazz kids. And I think, like, it's, like, completely mm. made me... It's just made me think, like, so much more about, like, like... So many of the problems in classical music, like, especially talking about, like, the stuff that we talked about earlier with, like, perfection and stuff like that, but also just, like, in general, like, I, the energy that jazz musicians have when they're playing with each other, like, that's what I look for Mm. when I'm playing in, like, chamber groups, when I'm playing in orchestra, but, like, I think the closest we get to it is like chamber, chamber groups yeah. where you like look up at each other and you're like hey, like hey, that, we're doing that this communication yeah. yeah um yeah and 
I think like going back to mental health, it's like easy to forget that you're doing this for fun. Mm -hmm. You're you're doing it because you love it. And it's hard to remember that sometimes when you think of the long run too. Yeah. Because you're like, I need to get a job. Oh, yeah. There's that whole aspect of things. Yeah. And so it's easy to get wrapped around the technical aspect of it and forget that you're doing it because you love doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... I guess just to wrap things up really quickly, um, there is, there's a lot to say all the time about, like, classical music and everything, but at the end of the day, like, we still love it. Like, we still absolutely love being musicians, and there's always stuff that we're learning and working on improving, not just, like, technique-wise, but, like, character-wise and artistry-wise, so I think there's just a lot to look forward to, and, um just remembering to like step back sometimes and just remember why we do what we do mm-hmm. and never to like forget that we're supposed to enjoy it because yeah, we, yeah. we are it's really easy like, to forget i know like we like think about how blessed we are to be able to play music as like our job you know like mm-hmm. that's like something we love doing but yeah thank you guys so much for watching um if you guys made it this far i really loved having ellie here Aww, as yeah. a special guest but like <laughs> Um, comment below if you want her back. I know you guys do. You don't even have to comment. <laughs> like, she's the best. Oh, yeah. I'll link her Instagram and her YouTube down below. Check her out. She's amazing. Ellie Obo Queen. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. So, that's it. Thank you guys again for watching, and see you in my next video. Bye.